this. And this when I and it's gonna be it's gonna sound complicated, but I'm gonna break this down super, super easy for everybody listening tonight. When you first hear these terms, they're gonna sound weird to you. But we're not gonna make them weird. We're gonna make them very easy. G C protein is a protein in the body that is used by macrophages in the body. And what it does, macrophages in the body are the ones that kill cancer cells. They basically stop cytokine storms that can be involved in cytokine storms. We'll explain what all these terms mean in a few minutes. The GC protein in the body adds vitamin D to it. Doug, how many times have I told the listening audience you have to take vitamin D every single day? That's super important. And, we're, and we've got another bunch of notes, too. We're going to talk about the other ways that they're doing things to us to reduce the population of the planet. Now, what's interesting about this is, remember, GC protein, it gets vitamin D added to it, and the GC protein becomes what's called GCMAF. This GCMAF protein is human immune system enzyme protein, also known as vitamin D binding protein, macrophage activating factor. Now, what that simply means is this. This GCMAF is probably the single most effective thing in the immune system to kill cancer cells. And what's happening is the immune system is being compromised by a product called Nagalase. It's an enzyme slash protein, and it's made by cancer cells and viruses causing immunodeficiency syndromes. It's also been linked to autism and a host of other problems we're going to talk about tonight. Now, what ends up happening is this. When this GC protein cannot be converted to the GCMAF protein, the entire immune system is compromised. What these doctors found was this, that this Nagalase protein enzyme they felt was being introduced into the body either virally or directly through immunizations. This is the protein power, this is the enzyme protein that destroys the immune system. I'm going to repeat this. Apparently, since these guys are dead and I can't talk to them, they have found that the Nagalase enzyme protein that was made by cancer cells and viruses, which causes immunodeficiency, is being added through the immunizations, either through viruses or through the immunization itself being given Nagalase. This is such incredibly damning information to the entire medical profession and the immunological profession and those folks that are producing immunizations that apparently they didn't want these guys around. Now, I'm not saying what happened to these guys. I'm just saying they're not on this planet anymore. So what ends up happening is this. The GC protein cannot attach itself to vitamin D because of the Nagalase. When that happens, the Nagalase becomes the agent that causes the cancer. Now, let's talk about Nagalase for a second. Now, we know that Nagalase is being found in super high concentration in autistic children. And what they're saying is that the Nagalase protein, this viral protein, was not in these children at childbirth, but it's being introduced somehow into these children they felt during the immunization process. Now, again, I wasn't involved in their research. I haven't seen the, the double-blind clinical study. I'm going to read some information on Nagalase. Nagalase is a protein made by all cancer cells and viruses. Its former official name is, now it's a long name, is alpha and acetyl galactose minidase. But let's just call it Nagalase for this tonight. Now, Nagalase causes immunodeficiency. It was being found in children being diagnosed with autism in high concentration. Nagalase blocks the production of the GCMAF, which is the vitamin D binding to the GC protein. Thus, it prevents the immune system from doing its job. Without an active immune system, cancer and viral infections can grow unchecked. As an extremely sensitive marker for all cancer, Nagalase provides a powerful system for early detection. Serial Nagalase testing provides a reliable and accurate method for tracking the results of any therapeutic regime for cancer, AIDS, 
or other chronic infections. This is an article from a book from Dr. Tim Smith, MD. He goes on to say, and this is super important, that guy's listened to me on this. He says that nagalase is like a stealth bomber. The nagalase enzymes synthesize in and release from cancer cells or a virus particle pinpoint the GCMAF protein facility on the surface of your TMB lymphocytes, this is part of your immune system, and simply wipes them out with an incredibly precise bomb, is what he says. How precise? He says, let me put it this way. Nagalase locates and attacks one specific two-electron bond located and only at the 420th amino acid position on a huge protein molecule, one of tens of thousands of proteins, each containing millions of electrons. This is like selectively taking out a park bench in a major city from 6,000 miles away. More astonishing, if that is possible, Nagalase never misses its target. There is no collateral damage. As you already know, GCMAF is a cell-signaling glycoprotein that talks to the macrophages, enabling them to rapidly find, attack, and kill viruses and cancer cells. By activating these macrophages, this GCMAF protein triggers a cascade that activates the entire immune system. When you block the production of this protein, Doug, this nagalase brings all of this wonderful anti-cancer, antiviral immune activity to a screeching halt, allowing cancer and infections to spread. These doctors apparently felt that this nagalase was being introduced via immunization, either viral or through nagalase itself, being directly injected into the children who were developing autism, who had very high nagalase at the very beginning of the autistic cycle immediately after the immunizations. So what they're saying is there's a smoking gun here with nagalase in the compromised immune system. The GM, the GCMAF for the treatment of cancer, this is another article, and this is by David Noakes, and this is, uh, this is, this is called GCMAF, it's available online, for the treatment of cancer, autism, inflammation, viral, and bacterial disease. And what it says, Human GCMAF, otherwise known as the vitamin D binding protein macrophage, which is the macrophage, which is like a vacuum cleaner that kills up cancer cells in the body, holds great promise in the treating of various illness, including cancer, autism, chronic fatigue, and possibly Parkinson's. Since, ni since 1990, 59 research papers have been published on this GCMAF. 20 of these are pertaining to treatment of cancer. 46 of these can be accessed online. GCMSF is a vital part of our immune system, which does not work without it, and it is part of the blood. When you, input, when you, when you put this other product, this nagalase, into the blood, it cannot produce GCMAF. Let me say that again. And so it's been shown to help such neurological diseases as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory conditions, and diabetic retinopathy. In the case of Dr. Autism, the, I'm sorry, in the case of autism, Dr. James Bradstreet has so far treated 1,100 patients with GCMAF with an 85% response rate, Doug. This is supposed to be impossible. His, his results show that a bell curve response with 15% of the patients showing total eradication of the symptoms. 15% of the autistic patients that he tested were no longer autistic. They had total eradication of the symptoms when they reintroduced GCMAF, which had been blocked by this nagalase. GCMAF is a vital part of our immune system, which does not work without it, and it is part of the blood. When you, input, when you, when you put this other product, this nagalase, into the blood, it cannot produce GCMAF. Let me say that again. So it's been shown to help that such neurological diseases as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory conditions, and diabetic retinopathy. In the case of Dr. Autism, the, I'm sorry, in the case of autism, Dr. James Bradstreet has so far treated 1,100 patients with GCMAF with an 85% response rate, Doug. This is supposed to be impossible. His, his results show that a bell curve response with 15% of the patients showing total eradication of the symptoms. 15% of the autistic patients that he tested were no longer autistic. They had total eradication of the symptoms when they reintroduced GCMAF, which had been blocked by this nagalase. However, now he goes on to say, in addition, 
experimental and clinical evidence confirms that GCMAF shows multiple powerful anti-cancer effects that have significant therapeutic impact on most tumors. In other words, they're, he's, they're saying here it reduces, they're saying it cures breast, prostate, kidney cancers. GCMF is created in the body by the release, release of two sugar molecules from a GC protein molecule. However, tumors release an enzyme called nagalase. Nagalase degrades this protein to the point where it cannot no longer attach with vitamin D. So what's happening is this nagalase is being introduced into the body somehow, and these doctors were saying it was through immunization. In conclusion, the GCMAF restores the energetic balance of the cell. Cancer cells driven by sugar metabolism become healthy oxygen-driven cells, so tumor cells no longer behave as a parasitic organism. The GCMAF stimulates microphages to consume the cancer cells and cells invaded by the viruses. This stimulation of the immune system and the anti antiogenic effect surrounding the tumor is beneficial in the cancer in several neurological orders such as autism, chronic fatigue, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. And then so he so goes on to say that it's available to the general public, which it no longer is. The laboratory producing it in Europe has been shut down. At the same time, these doctors supposedly left the planet. This is another article by Kent Heckel, Tekken Lively. And it says, Dr. Bradstreet, Nagalase and the viral issue in autism. He says in this article he wrote, in the past months, Dr. Bradstein has become interested in Nagalase, which he describes as an enzyme produced by cancer cells and viruses. He thinks it unlikely that children with autism have undiagnosed cancers and thus suspicion falls into the viral ideology. Dr. Bradstreet writes, viruses make the Nagalase enzyme as part of their attachment protein. It serves to get the virus into the cell and also decreases the body's immune reaction to the virus, thereby increasing the odds of survival. He goes on the right. It is quite reasonable and likely that the nature of the immune dysfunction and, sub and, and, the, and the frequently observed autoimmune problems in autism are mediated by persistent unresolved viral infection. He claims to have tested approximately 400 children with autism for the viral marker, Nagalase, and found nearly that 80% have significantly elevated levels. He hopes to publish this article and this information soon. And of course, we know he's not going to do that because he has left the planet. He goes on to go, it goes on to say that, that this, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep reading and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, then we're gonna do some other stuff. Because I, I wanna get this information out. This is, this is a straight article and it's from the role of type D, the vitamin D and type two diabetes. The role of diabetes, the vitamin D and type two diabetes. Now, I, now you say, what does this have to do with autism? Listen to what it says. In recent years, researchers have linked low level of vitamin D levels to insulin resistance and diabetes. Overcoming insulin resistance in particular could be the way to head off type 2 diabetes before it sets in. Right now, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence to suggest that giving people vitamin D may help them with their insulin resistance. The researchers on this article are Meredith Hawkins, MD, and Preddy Kishore. She goes on to say, this is super important, that these macrophages, these vacuum cleaners of the immune system, are specialized immune cells that attack invaders and researchers now think may have a secondary function as a cleanup crew. When fat cells get too large, they die, and macrophages move to eliminate the dead tissue. That, Kishwar says, may be why the cells are overrepresented in fatty tissue and why inflammation, a sign that macrophages are at work, is often more severe in people who are overweight or obese. I'm tying this diabetes right now. Everybody listen to me. For people with diabetes, the latest research suggests that macrophage activity can have an added drawback. Macrophages at work produce chemicals called cytokines. The cytokines are what cause inflammation. They serve as signal, so they serve as a signal carriers to other parts of the body. They can compare insulin action of the liver and muscle. Higher cytokines mean more insulin resistance, a key factor in type 2 diabetes. Now, what also happens is this things called what's called a cytokine storm. When these macrophages don't get sufficient quantities of vitamin D, they start releasing huge amounts of cytokines. So when you're giving a person these different chemicals in their diet, this nagalase, you can't get the vitamin D to attach to the macrophage. And when that happens, the macrophage induce what's called a cytokine storm. 